All right, how's everybody doing out there today? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you. And in this video, we're going to take a look at solving quadratic equations by factoring. Plus, I'm going to give you an added bonus of checking your work using the TI-84 graphing calculator. Now here in our first example, we have n squared equals 5n minus 6. Anytime you're, we're trying to solve a quadratic equation by factoring, you're going to want to rewrite everything so that you can get the variables and all the numbers on the left. So when you move the 5n and the minus 6 over, you end up with the equation n squared minus 5n plus 6 equals 0. Now there's a couple different ways and depending on your math skills, you some people might be able to go right to here and determine what the two factors are. Other people might need to use this technique where you're going to take the two letters a, c, whatever coefficients are in front of those two, which in this case is a 1 in front of the a term, which is n squared, and a 6. So if you multiply the 1 and the 6 together, you get 6. Now the b term, so b is going to go right there, and that's your linear term for a quadratic equation, and that in this case is negative 5. So what we want to do is find two numbers whose product is 6 and whose sum is negative 5. Now you can go ahead and list the factors of 6, so 6 and 1, uh, negative 6 and negative 1, we've got 2 and 3 and negative 2 and negative 3. So of all of those pairs, only one of them will give me a product of 6 and a sum of negative 5. So of course that would be this last pair right here. So what people do is they'll write one in there and one in there. Now what you do here is then you will go ahead and use those two values to write in your factors. So some will have the n minus 2 first and then n minus 3 second. And of course you want to make sure that you have that equal zero piece in there. Now what you're going to do next is take each factor and set that equal to zero. So we're going to have n minus 2 equals zero and n minus 3 equals zero. When I solve n minus 2 equals 0, of course, I get 2. When I solve n minus 3 equals 0, I get 3. So these are the two values that I come up with for n. Now, real quickly, I'm going to show you how to graph this, how to use your graphing calculator to check this. All right, so you're going to get that added bonus here coming at you right now. All right, so you're going to turn on your TI-84 graphing calculator. You're going to hit Y equals, and anything that's in there, you're going to clear that out. And if any of your plots are turned on, which you'll notice because if you see right now, like see how plot one is highlighted like that, you're going to want to make sure that all of those are turned off as well. So to turn that off, you just arrow up to it, hit enter, and then you can return down. Now what, are, what we're going to do is we're going to take the n squared minus 5n plus 6 equals 0. We're going to put that into y1. So there is no, we're going to use the letter x in its place. So we're going to type in x. Now the squared button is right down here, uh, diagonal from the 7 above the log. So after you have those two pieces in there, we're not going to graph this thing. We're actually going to look at the table first because we want to make sure that the equation that we had initially and the factors that we came up with are the same. So we're going to hit second and then graph, all right? because that'll give me my table. Now what you're going to analyze here is the y1 and the y2 columns. Those things are identical, and that's what you want. You want to make sure that those two columns are exactly the same, because then that tells you that you factored your equation correctly. Now I came up with two numbers that were zero. I came up with a two and a three. So I'm going to arrow up until I get to two and three. So if I take a look in the y1 and the y2 columns, notice for in the x column when I have two, across from that in both the y1 and the y2 columns is a zero. And the y1 and y2 columns when x is three, that's also zeros. Now this is going to lead into something later on that your math teachers will get into if they haven't already gotten into. If you were to graph this, so go ahead and we're gonna we're all gonna look at the same picture. We're gonna hit zoom and then number six. Now it's kind of hard to tell here, but you can see where the x-axis gets crossed by 
this shape, this parabola, and one of the places it crosses is at x equals 2, and the other one is over here at x equals 3. So those, that's going to be something we're going to play with and look around with in great detail uh, later on. But So I want to make sure that you know how to input those into your calculator so you can check to make sure that you're correct using the y1, y2, and then table feature. All right, so that's it for example number one. Let's go ahead and take a look at example number two. Now for here in this example, x squared plus 35 equals 12x, this 12x right here, we're going to move that to the other side. So when we do that, x squared is going to come first. That's your quadratic term. Now the 12x, when you move that over, that's going to be negative 12x. And you always want to write that term second. That's your linear term. And then the 35 is your constant. Now you didn't change sides with the 35, so make sure you keep the 35 as positive 35. And again, set it equal to zero. I know for my students, if you drop that equal zero, I will ding you. I will take a point off for that because you just took an equation and changed it into an expression. And they are not the same. So make sure you keep the equal zero part. Now, again, I need two numbers that I'm going to use here. Uh, so if I look at the x squared, there's a 1 there and the 35 is there. So I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of set this up. So 1 times 35 is 35. Now my middle term, my linear term is negative 12. So I need two numbers who have a product of 35 and a sum of negative 12. And there's two of them that work. One is negative 7 and the other is negative 5. Those are my two numbers. So I'll write those in x minus 7 and x minus 5 as my two factors. Now again, make sure you write your two factors equal to 0. Now if you would have switched it around and written it this way, x minus 5 first and the x minus 7 second. Either way, it's okay. That doesn't matter as long as you have the correct two factors. Now solving each factor, I'm going to write each one and set it equal to 0. So I'll get x equals 5 for one of my zeros. And the other one, when you set x minus 7 equal to 0, you'll come up with a value of 7. Now again, use your TI-83 or 84 graphing calculator to check that to make sure that your solutions are correct. So now as you're going through this, you got everything input y1 and y2 correctly. And then, of course, you want to make sure that you did your factoring correctly. So y1 and y2, both of these columns right here, are the same. And then I'm going to analyze it and look at x equals 5. Notice here we've got zeros, which is good. And at x equals 7, we've got our other pair of zeros. So those are, those are my two zeros, x equals 5 and x equals 7. And sometimes they're not just called zeros, they're called x-intercepts, roots, and solutions. So more on that later. So that's where you use your graph and calculator to check it and make sure that your table of values agrees with what you came up with algebraically. All right, so let's go ahead and check out example number three. We only have two more examples. These are going to be super fast. Now again, x squared minus 8x equals 9. Go ahead and try this one on your own, and let's see what you come up with. Go ahead and pause, and come back when you're done. So how'd you do with that one? Hopefully, you rocked it out. Not a big deal. Of course, your two factors, x minus 9 and x plus 1, you could have x plus 1 first and x minus 9 second. Either way, you still get the same two values for x, one being 9 and the other being negative 1. And again, use your graphing calculator, your TI-84, to check your factoring as well as your solutions, or roots, or x-intercepts, or zeros. All right, one more. I'm going to draw you in because this one's going to be a little bit of a curveball, so check it. So we're going to have r squared minus 5r equals 0. Now there's no constant term. There's only a quadratic term, the r squared, and a linear term, the minus 5r. Now always what you want to remember is the first rule of factoring is take out the GCF. And in this equation, which is already set equal to 0, we're just going to factor out an r. So you're going to have r times r minus 5 equals 0. Now in this situation, what you're going to do, this very first one, your answer is just going to be r equals 0. This second factor, of course, r minus 5 equals 0, you know what to do with that. You're just going to end up with r equals 5. So this one's a little bit different in that your first factor is just simply a variable. And anytime that happens, 
that particular solution is just going to be zero. So r equals zero is one of your solutions, and then r equals five is your other solution. So hopefully by now you know how to solve quadratic equations by factoring and use your TI-84 graphing calculator to verify that you have both factored the equation correctly and you can find the zeros correctly by using your table of values. All right, thanks for watching this video. You guys have a great day and peace out.